Hey, everybody. My name is Jennifer. This is Metatronis speaking. I have a story to share with you guys today. So this is the Oracle card that this experience is based off of. Um, so this owl and it says wisdom and the way this ties into my experience is that the mantids are a very wise galactic race. And so I was shown that I was going to be channeling a male mantid that I haven't channeled before. So here's what happened. I was told this mantid's name was Arlo, and that doesn't seem like a big deal, but there's this huge backstory. Basically, when I was first, very, very, very beginning, first trying to channel a being, I was following this um, book and this set of instructions from, and I, I'm sorry, I forget who it was that I um, which book it was because I I never finished it because I never got through the process, but it's these two people who are famous for channeling, and the book is something like learning how to channel. It's called something like that. And so I was like, yes, that's what I want. So they were saying that one of the first things you do is you have to figure out who you're channeling. You have to ask to speak to a high guide, and you have to know what their name is. You have to know who they are, and you have to know if that's who you want to channel based on their energy. And so I struggled with that step for so long, I never got past it. Um, but so I used to, every night, I would like meditate, and I would ask, 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 ask to, to see my guide, to see my guide, to see my guide, so I could start channeling this person, because I was trying to follow the rules of this book. And um, <laughs> it was funny, because at one point, I did see a being, and this is in, this is a, a vision through meditation, which is very hard to get in my opinion, very hard for me to get at least. Um, but I, all, all I saw, they were so concealed. All I saw was this being who was wearing like a dark hood. So I could not see their face. The hood, it would, whatever they were wearing was like really long. So it was just this dark hood, no face. Right. So it's kind of like, well, I don't know who you are. Cause I can't see anything about you. And I was, it was weird because I, I knew that their name started with an A. I knew they had a short name and I knew that it wasn't ultra common, but it wasn't so strange that people wouldn't know what it was. And so I couldn't figure it out. And then like three days later, I'm like randomly reading something. Nothing's ever random. And I come across the name Arlo and I went, Arlo, that's his name. And it's like, I knew it, but I couldn't access it. So I knew there was this guy, his name was Arlo, and I ended up telling him, hey, like, I don't, I don't want to talk to you. Um, I, I don't feel comfortable talking to you. I want to talk to somebody else because he was hooded. I couldn't see him and he, and it scared me. And so I ended up working with Mags who came to me as an ET, but she came to me and she was like, super sweet and loving with me. That's a whole nother story that I've talked about on another video. Um, so anyways, so I'm being told that I get to talk to Arlo and I like wanted to cry because I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot about him. And I was like, he's a mantid? And then I was like, oh, that's why he was hooded. Because can you imagine little Jennifer not having a uh, channel, not knowing anything about ETs, I asked for a high guide to help me. And the first one I get is like a, like a talking giant insect. I would have, that would have been the end of my spiritual journey. <laughs> it would have been the end because I would have been too scared because I just didn't know enough. And so a lot of things are scary in the beginning because you just don't know better. So thank goodness he wore a hood and thank goodness I had another guide step in that didn't spook me. Okay. So, let me see if I can get to the actual part of the story here for you. Um, yeah. Okay. So, I, Arlo comes, and the first thing he does is he touches my solar plexus, which 
again, I'm going to say that the solar plexus is like the most, I don't, is this for everybody? Is this just for me? I just feel like it's the most vulnerable, most like personal chakra. I don't know. Guess it's just me. I I don't know. So anyways, he comes over and touches my solar plexus and they do that when they want to give me love energy. It's like, it's like they do that. They give love energy. It's like, oh, I'm so safe. Okay. I can talk to you. This is fine. Cause they just, they put their energy into it. So next he does my sacral chakra. And so I'm like, oh, okay. Apparently I need a tune up. Um, I wasn't balanced enough in my chakra. So he was just doing like a basic tune up on me. Um, and then he started working on my ears, my third eye, my temples. <laughs> and I can, I can tell that it's a mess. And, and as he's right here in this space, finally, I can see what he looks like because when he was down lower, I didn't get a visual of him. I could just feel him. And as he came closer to my face, the image started coming through and I can see that he's not green like the other two mantids that I have channeled before. He's taller than the other mantids. Um, he's like a silver gray color, like a light silver gray, um, smaller head. So you can just tell it's, you can tell that they're he's a mantid the green ones are mantids but they just have different features just like the same way the human race is you can tell we're all human but we sometimes have you know those different features so he pulls something out of my crown chakra and i'm like oh was that trauma and he says no demon and i say oh <laughs> thank you <laughs> I'm just like, oh my god! <laughs> All these guides. It's like the. I feel like it's the first time I'm talking to them that they know it's not the first time I'm talking to them. But it's just so weird because we have these really, um, like personal or involved interactions right off the bat. And to me, it's weird because I'm like, I don't know you yet. I don't know who you are yet. Um, but so he pulls a demon out of my crown. Oh, great. Um, and then I see him repairing damage to my aura. So apparently I'm just a train wreck. Um, and it's fascinating because this is the first time I've seen it this way. My aura looked like a ripped spider web. Like it looked really delicate and fine. And he goes over to rebuild it and he's almost like a spider. Like he's got these little appendages. They're, they're not hands. They're like insect-like and um but they're like more narrow and he's just i don't know how to do it he was just going 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 he, he goes really fast really exact but really gentle um so he's repairing that my aura started glowing a bluish white color never seen that happen before um and then it felt really nice and then so i asked him like what does this mean and he was telling me essentially that this was like a a sphere that he had placed around me to give me divine energies and recharge me and I was like oh is this like some kind of special mantid magic and he's like yes so like, okay and then <laughs> he liked when I asked him that <laughs> and um oh that's what it was that's what it was I'm sorry I skipped something I needed to tell you so I asked him if it was special mantid magic he said yes and then I said will you teach me and he said yes and that's what he liked is when I asked him if he would teach me the magic um but he was like not right now we need to talk first so I was like okay so then right away he just pulls me onto the mantid planet it's just boom just a change of location right away like that um and the planet just looks like dirt and open space and there's this night sky and there's a ton of stars and it's pretty and it's open and it just looks peaceful. And there's this huge red rock that's like flat on top. And this is weird. I'm remembering. It's like he's pulling me back to it right now. The rock was warm from when the sun had been on it. That's weird. Was it the sun? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he says sun. Okay. 
So this is where our interaction kind of really gets going. So he says, this is my favorite place to think. And so we lean back on this rock so that we can look up at the stars. (laughs) And it's funny. He can hear my thoughts. (laughs) <laughs> and I forget that they can do that. And so, you know, I'm immediately just starting to ask questions, ask questions, so he can hear me, <clears throat> excuse me, asking all these questions. And he says, gosh, my throat, listen. I wonder if he's trying to line up with me. It's strange how every time I try to talk to you guys, you can hear it. Sounds funny. <clears throat> every time I try to talk to you guys, something's going on with my throat nowadays. Um. So I have all these questions. I'm laying back. And he's like, it's not complicated. You asked for a guide to step forward. And I wanted to be that for you. And I'm trying to remember what it, what question it was in my head. Oh, it was like, why was he the, why was he the first one to step forward? Like, what kind of dynamic do I have with him? Like, who is this guy to me that of all the guides that could have stepped forward for me first, it was him. And so he heard me and he's like, it's not complicated. You needed a guide. I wanted to be the guy I stepped forward. Um, and he says, do you feel the power of our skies? There's something special about our stars. The secret is that we learn to take care of the stars. We learn to speak to their souls and help them each as individuals. We heal them the way you heal another human. They are at their best because of our compassion for them. So their energy is magnificent. Their energies are healing. By healing them, they heal us. So he's talking in proper context of whatever's going on, but he was definitely giving analogies for lots of other stuff. So I'll I'll leave everyone to their own conclusions on that. So when he told me that story about healing the stars, I remembered this one experience I had in what feels like a long time ago with Metatron where, and this was, this was last year. This was before I had a business. This is, I was channeling, but things hadn't really come together quite yet. And, um, he had asked me to heal a star. And so I brought it down and I did the healing he told me to do on it. And, um, and it's funny because like symbolically it came down as like a star shape versus, and you know, real stars are not actually star shaped. But um, so I did the healing on it and put it back where he told me to put it back. And when I healed the star, <laughs> I was very aware that the star had consciousness. The star was alive. The star had a personality. The star thanked me. Like it was crazy. Um, and it was so crazy so early on that I, I that I kind of blocked it out because I was like, that that didn't happen. That couldn't have happened. Um, so then I was asking Arlo when I healed the star, like, is that something I learned when I was a mantid? And he says, Yes. It's been part of our planet's culture for a very long time. We are very focused on celestial knowledge and understanding as a race. We've gathered a great amount of understanding from our work with the cosmos. So this is where stuff gets crazy. So when I'm doing this channeling with Arlo, it's nighttime. I'm laying in bed. It's dark. In real life, at this point in the conversation, on the left side of my face, I see a bright white oval about... about this big and at an angle just open up right here and it was small and it had kind of almost like rainbow colors for the the ring the ring was the only part that was lit up the inside was still black and as soon as it happened I went whoa and I just looked over and when I looked over I couldn't see it with my vision anymore it was like it had disappeared um And so I was kind of spooked and I was like, what was that? Because I don't normally see 
crystal clear stuff with my physical eyes. That's always wild when that happens. Um, so it looked like a portal, but the opening was very small. And so I was kind of like, okay. So I asked Arlo, Arlo, like, was that you? And he says, yes. So I'm like, oh, okay. And I was like, well, why did you do that? What, like, what was that for? And I wasn't getting an answer. So all of a sudden, my solar plexus starts feeling gross. And so I, my, it registers for me. I don't feel right. I'm being attacked. When I got that yes from Arlo, I wasn't talking to Arlo. I was getting, somebody else was giving me answers to, to delay my reaction. So as soon as I figured out, oh, I feel gross and being attacked, I started calling in Odin because Odin is my guy for clearing anything. Well, o Odin's kind of my protector from extraterrestrial and demonic stuff and he'll pull things out. So I had him start working on it. Um, so just let that be an example that anybody can get a wrong answer. Anybody can be fooled by a shoulder, by a pendulum, by, by a word that they hear from a guide. Anyone could be fooled by that. But energy never lies. So if you're talking to someone, a guide, and all of a sudden you don't feel good, something is going on. And if they tell you everything's fine, nothing's going on, you're talking to a liar. <laughs> because always trust your body. Always trust what you can feel. Um, so let's see. So I asked Odin to clear me. After a while, Odin is able to tell me that this was a present from the Draconians. Present. So I can feel it in my head now. Arlo is working quickly around my head to repair things. He works super fast. His two little arm appendages were just like moving nonstop in these short movements. They were trying so hard to clear me so quickly. So whatever the draconians put into me moved. So it didn't just stay in one spot. I felt it migrate from the solar plexus down to my sacral. So I was like, okay. Um, and it had been, it, is, it was such a long time since I had had an attack that I almost forgot that I could have one because you just, I don't know, I guess that's just me. Bad things aren't happening. I'm like, life is great. Bad things never happen. And then bad things happen. I'm like, oh yeah, these things happen. <laughs> um, so everything just happens in cycles. It's just normal. Sometimes it's going to be easy and sometimes stuff is just going to pop up. So it actually started hurting a bit. So I had to stop my session with Arlo. And then I realized I couldn't see much of anything with my third eye. So that's normally the first thing that is attacked for me is my third eye and my crown because they want me to not be able to see what's going on and they want me to not be able to talk to my guides. So I can't figure out what's going on. So those things are normally attacked so quickly that I only feel the attack when it's hit a, a farther spot along. I, you know, I can feel it in my solar plexus. But it probably traveled all the way down there before I realized it. So, um, so it was kind of it was kind of yucky. I was like, "Oh, I'm not feeling good." And as I was going to sleep, they were still working on me. They worked on me all night long, but I could finally start to see a little bit, and I could see my my guardian angel. Feywanel, who stays on my left, he had his wings around me. And I was like, why does he have his wings around me? And then so I tried to look out into the rest of my bedroom to see what was going on. And because if he's covering me, that means there's energies in the, that means there's entities in the room that shouldn't be there. Um, so when I tried to look, I got a flash of this extraterrestrial that I've seen one other time. And the other time I saw them was also during a t an attack. And basically, I kid you not, these guys look like hammerhead sharks. They look like hammerhead sharks with human legs. They stand upright. They have light blue skin or whatever you call it. Um, and they have like, they have these really beautiful markings. They have, um, 
it's like down the, it's hard to show you guys because of where, how I am, but it's like down the sides of their bodies, they have these like light, bluish white glowing dots of light that are just part of their body. Um, so it's really pretty actually. But anyways, they look like hammerhead sharks. Um, so I got a glimpse of several of those in my room with me. So I was like, great. And, you know, Michael and whoever defending me from the situation. Um, so I made a mental note that I was like, okay, I'm going to ask more about this race later because I need to know more about these guys. Now, they, now they've shown up twice. Okay. And they're causing trouble both times. I need to know who these people are. So I asked Metatron if this race generally works for the darkness. And he gave me a really reluctant yes. He didn't want to have to say that, but he was like, yeah. And so I was like, okay, well, maybe I can talk to one of the few people in that race that are from the light to try to understand them better. I had to step away and now I'm back. And so I just want to finish up this message with you. Um, I'm hoping that I have an opportunity to channel with Arlo again since it got interrupted. Um, but this is all I have for him at this point. So until next time. I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.